I get I get messages. I'm in touch with several families right now. He said instead they're seeing babies with their skin stripped off and mothers with their arms cut off and people burnt to death. No water coming through. And then there's no light. Israel has committed a war crime, cutting off the electricity. There's intermittent internet. They don't know if their family's alive or dead. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Lauren Booth. Thank you for accepting us. We are going through really hard times as an ummah. We know that in Palestine, our brothers and sisters are displaced from their homes. There are babies dying, food supplies, water and electricity are cut off. They don't know what to do. As a journalist, you've been among those people many times. We have the opportunity to look at the events from both sides. Many things are told in the media about this issue, but can you tell us what is really happening there right now? What is going on now is a gameplay that the Palestinians, particularly in Gaza, have been used to not for 50 months, not for 50 weeks, 50 years. This is not a 10 days old conflict. This isn't two weeks. It hasn't just started a week ago. That's that's the phrase that I'm taking out here. This is a long extended era of pain for the Palestinian people where their resources and their land have been stolen deliberately and maliciously by Zionists and Zionism and that ethical, unethical, I should say, way of um, dominating a population. So it's not a new thing. You know, I spoke to to uh, my friend Yasser last night, and he's in Gaza City. May Allah protect him, protect his family and all our brothers and sisters, Amin. And I said, where are you? He said, we're outside our house. And um, I said, how are the boys doing? He's got two young sons. He said, well, are you, sister? They're struggling, they're only babies. They're only young, less than 10 years old. He said, and when I look at them, I think they should be doing their homework or playing on a beach or going on a roundabout, you know, being pushed in a playground, having some fun. He said, instead, they're seeing babies with their skin stripped off and mothers with their arms cut off and people burnt to death. How is this a childhood? I want you to imagine this for a second. No water coming through, right? They're, they're going sip by sip right now. Oh, I've had my three sips for the day. I've had my cup of water for today, that's, that's it. And then there's no light. Israel has committed a war crime, cutting off the electricity. There's intermittent internet. They don't know if their family's alive or dead. And then they're told to get out of their houses. So I know families last night who slept in the street even as bombings were going on. And do you get messages from uh, our brothers and sisters in Palestine right now? Yeah, the messages, uh, I get I get messages. I'm in touch with s several families right now. And um, it's things like, um, pray for us, this may be my last day. Mohammed Ajour, he's got no legs already from an Israeli a missile attack 10 years ago. He's a basketball player, pro basketball player in a wheelchair. He uh, said, this may be our last day, pray for us. Uh, I've got parents in the street saying uh, that they're, they're, they're leafleting our homes, we're not gonna leave. And then I have other friends who are trying to say, how are you, how's your morale, are you okay? And that, wallahi, that's the thing that breaks me. That's what breaks me, because they ask, they have, they have strong enough iman to say, are you okay? I'm sitting here in Istanbul in a luxurious condition, but their iman cares about the ummah. Do we as an ummah care about them? Uh, many people in the West, including celebrities like, such as Justin Bieber, posted support messages for Israel. There are also people that say Hamas has massacred civilians and that's why Israel is attacking. It is self-defense. Can this be looked at like this? Can all these bombings on Gaza be justified like that? Justin Bieber and people like this, shh, be quiet. Don't open your mouths. Don't even say the word uh, Palestine. Well, you can't. You're, the, the word won't leave their lips because they don't understand the situation. You know, anybody who has not looked into who the people of Palestine are and their struggle, you have no right to even comment about what is going on now because you have no idea about the pain that the people have had to go through. SubhanAllah. So to celebrities who don't know this inside and out, to the people in the pubs, to the people in the West, uh, you know, talking over the internet, to the trolls, shush, this is not your time, be quiet. If I, if I come into your home, if I come into your home, beat your wife, 
kill your children and kick you out of your home. And years later, you kick the door in and try to get home. And you're in the house saying, this is my house. Who is defending what here? There is no self-defense ideal when you're squatting on people's land, when you are deliberately and continually killing people and starving them of their human rights. This is not self-defense. This is what they've wanted all along. Netanyahu stood just a couple of weeks ago in the uh, European Union or at the United Nations. Netanyahu stood at the United Nations just a couple of weeks ago with a map that completely erased any Palestinian presence at all. This is their excuse to enact upon that. But they had the plan anyway. This is, this is what they've wanted to do. If you see the disgusting words coming out from Israeli news media, from their Zionist politicians, and from uh, so-called supporters of Israel, you'll see annihilate the Palestinians, kill their kids, take their land, make them suffer, push them into Egypt, their agenda is very, very clear. That's not self-defense. That is ethnic cleansing. That's depopulation. You know, as human beings, we are affected even if we see someone's arm being broken. Mm -hmm. So how can Israel be so merciless, so cruel? What kind of mindset do these oppressors have while committing these horrible acts? What goes through their mind, really? What is their mindset? That's a really good question. If you can look at somebody being hurt and have no feeling for that person. That is called dehumanization. And there has been a process of dehumanization from the beginning of the uh, Zionist state in 1948 when it was announced. They have always referred in their spaces to Palestinians and the Arabs generally, by the way, as two-legged cattle right? This is from their own sources as animals to be herded here and herded there. They have no concept of, of our people, Muslims, Arabs, and Palestinians as real people. This is very, very dangerous. And it is one of the markers of impending genocide. There is a famous um, uh, list which uh, gives the 10 steps towards genocide. And one of the final ones is the utter dehumanization of the other. So they don't see Palestinian children as children. They see them as Hamas supporters. I've never seen a six-month-old vote in any election. And while we're at it, by the way, can we just address something? You must have heard um, Gaza having been referred to as an open prison. Yeah, you've heard that, right? It's not. It's a concentration camp right? Let's start using the terms. We don't mind that the other doesn't like these terms. We need to use what is accurate. Can I just describe why Gaza is a concentration camp? Because it's very important. Let's talk about prison first. A prison is somewhere where criminals go. So the minute you talk about prison, it's like, oh yeah, uh, Palestinian criminals, they're all in that prison called Gaza. No. Men, women, and children who have committed no crimes are not prisoners. Agreed? They can't be imprisoned by the state. Good. Secondly, in a prison, the one who controls the prison has to give three meals a day. They have rights to health care. They have to have clean water. And here's a really important thing. They get visitation from the outside world, from their families, and they have a due date to leave. None of these apply to the people of Gaza, who have for 16 years been under an illegal siege. People don't seem to understand what that means. You ca I have been on a boat from Cyprus to Gaza through the Israeli naval blockade. That's the only way you can get to Gaza. They're fishing um, their sea, the Gazan area of sea, enshrined in this useless international law, uh, sees their fishing men, their fishermen, regularly bombed out of the water, regularly murdered. So there's no way to get in or out. There's no airport. There's, there's no rail system. There's no buses taking them here or there. So therefore, the definition of a concentration camp, a space where men, women, and children are crowded into oppressive conditions by an external force because of their, and listen to this, political beliefs, religious beliefs, views, ethnicity, and then they are treated harshly. That's what the Gazan people have experienced and are experiencing right now. We have Zionist Jews bombing a concentration camp. Congratulations. These lands have, have been under the rule of Jews, Christians, and Muslims in different periods throughout history. In, the, in which period was that land the most peaceful and why? You know, there's a couple of moments in history that it's worth reflecting upon uh, when we look at the possibility of Jerusalem having peace. 
And that was uh, the first one I'll bring up is when Umar radiallahu an, uh, the conquest of Jerusalem from then the Crusader Christians who had massacred all the Jews and all of the uh, people living in Jerusalem when they took it a thousand years ago and before and before. And when Umar radiallahu an, he arrived there and he said, I won't pray in the Christian church. I'll pray outside because this has a right to exist. This is part of the history and I don't want it to be taken away after I've prayed in there. And to this day, there is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, one of the holiest sites in Christianity, and around the corner, a tiny little mosque called Masjid Umar, right? And then there followed a period where the Jews were actually welcomed back, back by the friend of the Prophet Muhammad. Did you know that? They were welcomed back. Subhanallah. And then the Ottomans came. And for 500 years, there was a thriving society of three faiths. Subhanallah. It is possible, but it is not possible with Zionism because they do not want it. It is not what they want. They want a Jewish-only state, a Jewish-only Jerusalem, and they don't want Christians or Muslims there. And we have to be very clear about that because they make it clear. And I want to ask, did you experience any unforgettable events that you, when you were there, uh, were there any unforgettable events that you witnessed there? In Gaza. Yeah. I was in um, Bayat Hanun several years ago, and I was visiting a family who lived on uh, the uh, barbed wire fake border that, that the Israeli regime has put there. And um, I, uh, it was like a garage. They were effectively living in a garage. So whatever your garage looks like, times it by three, that's what this family of 12 were in. And the mother was introducing me to her children and young Yassine, he had uh, white phosphorus burns all across his legs, terrible. The other son, 16, um, he had a terrible, um, you know, fresh scar from a bullet from uh, an Israeli sniper because he'd been collecting uh, rubbish to sell. And um, there was a little girl and she was just doing this. She said, oh, she hasn't talked since the last war. She's got shell, you know, we'd call it shell shock or PTSD. And it just went, on and on and on. And then um, the Adhan went, and I was Muslim at this time, this is 2012, and I went into a back room and I just started to cry. I just started to cry. Allah, I can't do this. Allah, I don't know what. Please help them. And the mother came in and she put her hand on my shoulder and she said, Habibti, why are you crying? I said, I'm crying for you. I'm crying because I hate this. I hate this for you and I hate that I can't do anything. And I hate that you have to live like this. And she said, don't cry for us. We are so happy because we have Allah and we know that if we are steadfast, he will give us Jannah, Alhamdulillah. As Muslims, unfortunately, we are helplessly watching these events at home. What would you say to a Muslim who asks, what can I do as an individual? As our feeds are now full of the death of babies beheaded by Israeli rockets and mothers screaming in grief and fathers dying, bleeding out on the roadside because there's no more beds. As we see whole areas decimated and the smoke fills the air and the people are crying and fleeing. Don't give up hope. Allah is with the believers. We remember what the Prophet ﷺ said in a famous battle when he was driven up a mountain with a few of his followers and the enemy was mocking him and saying, look how many of your famous fighters are dead and your friends and family. And the Prophet ﷺ said to tell them, ah, but here's the difference. Our dead are in Jannah and yours are in Jahannam. And then Allah Ta'ala tells us in the Holy Quran, don't say the Shaheed are dead for truly we know that they are alive. And I have seen this from brothers who have reported directly to me the Shaheed that they've seen of their friends seven years after they've been buried, fresh like the day before the smell of musk coming from them. And wallahi, brothers and sisters, the Palestinians see angels. In other wars, I have had friends call me and say, sister, I wish you were here. And I'm saying, why would you wish me to be under the bombs? I love you, but... And they're like, wallahi, because the Sakina has descended and the angels are amongst us. Subhanallah, miracles exist. Trust Allah, hasbunallah wa nyamal wakil, and shaddi kalbi, strengthen our hearts. This is not a time for crying, this is a time for steadfastness. And wallahi, in the dictionary, next to the word for steadfast, should be one word, Palestine. So let's remember, brother, as well at this time, okay, that shaitan wants us to feel hopeless. Shaitan wants us like this, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. That's not Islam. Put the phone down, 
and go to your prayer mat and sit there. It doesn't matter if it's prayer time. And just say, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Qudus, Ya Salam, Ya Allah, victory to the oppressed people, victory to your slaves, victory to your servants. Oh Allah, bless them. Oh Allah, bless them. Make your dhikr, strengthen your heart through the dhikr. Allah, curse the oppressors. Allah, bless the Palestinians with victory. Ameen.